What's going on, everyone? Check out what's coming up this week on Legacies. It looks like it's used to inseminate elephants. That's what this <laughs> thing looks like. I couldn't, I couldn't have done a better plug myself. That was that's just it, that's, that's <laughs> it. We're just going to grab that snippet, and that will live forever. So, mm. sorry, guys. I got a little emotional. No, there. So- don't apologize. This, this, this platform's open, baby. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome to another week of Legacies. I'm your host, Tom Ritchie, joined by Wesley the Wizard Bowles. <laughs> I expect that in the lower third. Still, to still, come up now. <laughs> Dude, I'm not letting go. Thinking. I am not letting go of that. It's not no, I know you're not. No, I'm going to need to find some. Uh, I'm going to need to find some magic or, or wizard animations to uh you gotta have something these, I, I i saw something on linkedin where someone had i think it's in their profile and it said something about wizard and i slacked it to the team and i think i don't know if it was ian or someone else that's like they realize we have our own wizard right like they're not a wizard let me see their accolades <laughs> yeah yeah anyways what's going on this week there's a lot we got uh we got quite a bit i think uh most exciting end of this week. We're going to get a, a chance to head over to Can Expo on, on, on Saturday. So uh, looking forward to, to, I mean, it runs from Friday till yeah. to Sunday, but yeah. we're going to be there on Saturday. So kind of excited to see everyone. It should be a good show. This is a uh, year two. Uh, we haven't been in attendance, um, but looking forward to connecting and reconnecting with a ton of different people and brands because it is, it is a consumer show um, or directed to consumers. Um, but there still seems to be a lot of brand to brand or b2b business activities which is expected obviously yeah absolutely i think it's worth noting too for anyone who's uh, who's traveling there this weekend the ttc or sorry the go train uh, is not stopping an exhibition on friday i believe uh or maybe it's just saturday one of the two but uh, if you're you're traveling there make sure you know you have plans to either you know uh, head to the go train at union and then catch a streetcar or something but uh exhibitions uh, station is closed either friday or saturday so uh, maybe All right. Plan for we're there. Anytime. We're there Saturday. We're going to drive in. Um, hopefully, yep. traffic. I mean, I still get PTSD from all those hours spent fucking driving to Toronto, man. Well, you did. You did. You were doing. What were you doing? You were doing three hours a day, one way. It, you it one depending. Point? So here was what was screwed, right? So <clears throat> I could leave at seven and still get there for ten, or I could leave at eight thirty and sometimes still get there for ten. It all depended right? What was going on. Um, but yeah, typically I always counted two hours there, two hours back. And I knew all the pit stops on the way, all the best bathrooms, right? <laughs> Cause I would tons of coffee, protein shake, everything in the morning. And by the time, you know, it was liquid diet all morning long, I would have to make two stops sometimes at yeah. least. And I mean, I, it's a two yeah. hour drive, but I'm like, and if I was driving with anyone, they're like, what the hell's wrong with you? And I'm like, listen, I consume a lot of liquid in the morning. My prostate's fine. No issues here. I'm going to be, I know I'm getting older, but everything's good. Okay. Um, but anyways, no, it's going to be a great event. Um, we're, we're certainly looking forward to it. We are media sponsors for, through high flyer. Um, we thank them for reaching out to us and, you know, allowing us to partake in that. It's been, uh, it's been a fun lead up, um, you know, a lot of different posts and some giveaways, um, and just seeing the interaction with all the different brands and the people that are going to be attending, um, discipline stoners I'm looking at you finally get to meet face to face. Um, that'll be fun. So yeah, they're hosting main stage all weekend. They're going to be just, they'll be cooked by the end. Literally. Oh, they'll be absolutely but, cooked. Yeah. But yeah. come Monday, I mean, they're going to be just asleep for a week probably. Right. Um, yeah. so first of all, let, like you haven't even noticed or said anything yet. Check this out. I was going to try and surprise you. Or you did notice well, it didn't say anything. I did, You're like, where did you get that fucker? It. I specifically <laughs> didn't say anything, but yeah, it's uh, <laughs> one I've been waiting to reveal for a while, I think. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we did we did a test. Obviously, High Flyer, we provide a ton of different swag for the brands. We have our own lineup and more launching. Um, Legacy Collection is something that's been within you know our thoughts, at least for the last, what, year anyways. Um We'll do some some pretty cool shit with this. Uh, the intent is that you know those that have a legacy, typically ending up here on legacies that the you know we'll we'll be able to reward those individuals in the industry that have gotten us to where we are. So, um, legacy collection, it's coming. I might I might not even be able to wear these. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie, it's, it's, uh, it would, be, it would not well, be doing justice to those who were in the industry we'll, as legacy to be. Let, well, hold on, aware. hold on. You go back to 2018. You certainly did a lot of support for brands that were making their way into the cannabis act and that you know world of hell um, that still operate here. And I, you know, sometimes I question. I'm like, are we are we fucking nuts? 
Like we knew all the tri challenges, trials and tribulations of working with brands for what, five, six years, both US and Canadian. And we decide to start a business venture in the cannabis industry again. We love them all. We know the struggles, but I mean, the most non-responsive group to emails, I, I shouldn't say everyone, no, obviously not everyone is in this um texts i mean if you're in my if you're in my phone you can expect texts from me because if i'm emailing i'm not waiting around it's just not, it's not <laughs> happening no, um, exactly. but great show i mean speaking of texts, i just messaged uh mr varner kevin varner the king i'm gonna start calling him the king i mean it's royal harvest right so he's our guest coming up uh shortly um super excited i you know he helped us with some tests early on um and that blew up everyone was like oh my god kevin's on right and it wasn't shortly after his account got taken down off Instagram. And so he's rebuilding that. Yeah, I don't think that's the first time for him either. I think he's had that happen multiple times. Yeah, now. I'm not sure. We'll have to ask him what that's like. I know once once they go through that and shut you down, some individuals seem to think they can get their accounts back. But if you have any reference to cannabis and any human goes in and reviews your account, you're not getting back on. Your account's not coming back up. So no, um, no. anyways, we'll, we'll talk about some of that along with... Uh, ton of other stuff. I mean, Kevin's got some crazy stories that are very reminiscent of my early days. Um, so we're hoping that he'll be able to share those and we can do justice to what he's building and his legacy because he's doing some really cool shit. So, And not to mention, if you haven't heard Kevin Varner talk before, you've never heard someone more passionate in your oh, entire life. Talk he is, about anything, so, he is anything. so passionate. Um, and I think there was a turning point. Again, we, we'll get into this with him, but there was a turning point in his life where you know, it was just an uphill battle. It was consistently beating his head against the wall and something clicked in him where he's like, no, this is what I'm going to use. This is my, this will be my legacy. I'm going to use cannabis as a means to bless everyone. Right. And, and that's really what, uh, you know, the stance that he takes. So looking forward to having him on, um, other things I'm looking forward to hold on, hold on. I got full of fucking surprises this morning. We're not doing giveaways today. I don't think, I don't think, but we might hold on. One sec. One always comes out of it. We'll see. We'll it see. does. It's getting swapped out. Oh, you got them early. I got. I got to tuck all my fucking hair in. There, the, he the headphones hide it. How's that? You haven't seen them yet. I haven't seen I mean, them. You've seen. Yet. You've seen mock-ups, but um, it's fucking official, dude. We've got embroidered hats. Nice. So these are these are the fifty nine fifties from New Era. Right? Yeah, you know, you know me. I'm very particular with hats. I mean, you know, the the mass um, individuals that may want them. I don't know if we can ever afford to do all New Era hats and the fifty nine fifties and the you know. But um, regardless, comfy hats, amazing embroidery draw job. They did these like within two days for us. Uh, local local embroiderer. She's been sewing. 30 plus years. Um, she's like, ah, I like you. I'll put your, put your job ahead of everyone else's. So anyone that might be listening, that's waiting on an embroidery job locally. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that said, I mean, we've, we've got these, we're going to meet up Saturday. I've got hats for you as well. Uh, maybe we'll give some out. I'm not sure. We'll see what happens. It depends is who we the, like. Uh, is that the fitted one or is that the, sorry, no, that's the This is the snapback the... one. Um, only because black, I mean, I could have, so the, the fitted ones are gray. Um, I could have certainly probably gone with the gray one today but i don't know i like black for some reason yeah no i know they look great they look great yeah they're fantastic i love i love hats but and you remember this conversation which is oh shit who are we with today because most of my hats other than like a black rapper's hat maybe another one they're all brand hats right like i i don't even have nearly the collection out that i have so there's some behind me um but they're all brand hats. And if we're going to have a brand on, obviously I can't wear that. I mean, I could if I wanted to be a dick, but they'd probably be staring at my hat the whole time going, you're a dick. <laughs> like, <laughs> right? Especially if it's another brand that these brands don't like. So I'm playing with my microphone like crazy today. Um, anyways, one of the things I'm super excited about coming up, I'm a big Ghostbusters fan. I don't know if you are. I know you love Dan Aykroyd. I, I love Dan Aykroyd. Absolutely love Dan Aykroyd. Um, I don't, I don't dislike Ghostbusters. I was just never in, I'd never, you know. It wasn't really your I think, generation. I, yeah, I don't think yeah. it was, well, I don't know, because there were other movies from that time that I was just sure. as into as a kid. I just, it was not one for me that I was, you know, crazy about as a kid. So I'd never, right. when the sequels and stuff got announced, it was never uh, yeah. imperative for me to go see them or anything like that. Yeah, right? so new one coming out, uh, Ghostbusters Frozen Universe, I think it's called. Is it Frozen Universe? Uh, yeah, I probably think, check uh, that. Paul, Paul Rudd's in that one, Paul right? Paul Rudd, yeah. So for me, I mean... 
we got a date way back and, you know, I don't care if it dates me, but, you know, I saw the first one, I think in theaters when I was like nine or 10, um, scared the living shit out of me. You know, I'm young I'm, and I get it. It's supposed to be a comedy, but at the same time, I mean, CGI wasn't really quite a thing. It was just, you know, becoming a thing. Um, and it was pretty good. <laughs> so it scared the shit out of me in some cases. And I, I can't say I had nightmares, but I just love the sequels. I love all the actors. Um, Dan Aykroyd, especially good old Canadian boy, um, would, would be incredible to have him on at some point in time. See if we can get him on. Maybe this yeah, will do it. He does. He does. I mean, he's got so many ventures as well. Like I know he's got a, it's a vodka business. He's got There's two, right? Yeah. Is it um, the skull head or something like that? Is that the one he's involved yeah, with? Yeah. Yeah. That's the one. That's the one. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I know. I, I, go ahead. Is this out? Is this out now? Oh, it comes March out. I think it comes first. out this weekend. Um, okay. so a great movie. I mean, if you can get the theaters to watch it, I always like watching at home. So I wait a little longer. Um, but with these, um, I certainly want to get there, uh, to see it because you've got, I think three of the original Ghostbusters are in it. Um, Bill Murray, who is just a fucking legend in his own, um, he's in it. Right. So yeah, looking forward to that. And I know, you know, so you go back like, you know, Blues Brothers and, you know, so many other like cone heads and just the you know, movies are popping into my head, but Blues Brothers, <laughs> obviously sticking very close to it. Um, never being a huge endorser of cannabis use or standing behind weed or marijuana, but there's always been this relevant tie somehow, whether it's the movies or, you know, the Belushi brothers and what, you know, Elwood, right? <laughs> remember the, the character he played Elwood. So I don't know if it was just attached because of movies that he was in, but I know that he is still close with Jim Belushi. Um, and they, and Jim Belushi has Belushi farms out of the States. Um, be cool. I know that we're focused on the Canadian industry, but individuals like that, that have built a legacy themselves, it'd be pretty cool to have them in at some point in time, just to see what's up, right? Like what, what kind of struggles are you dealing with? But also that's a pretty cool brand and they've got a huge farm, like Belushi farms is massive in the U S so, yeah. um, yeah. but anyways, yeah, Blues Brothers, yeah, Blue, Blues Brothers specifically was when I grew up on like my, my dad and i used to watch that all the time it's, it's, it's some of the songs in that that they perform are just uh, oh next. they're true performers so good. right yeah, like performers. They, i think they did i, I don't uh, think people realize that 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 band that they put together with donald duck down and all that stuff is it was a real band they, they played right. that together it was it was so good. Super, yeah super yeah good. so that i'm looking forward to that i know we can't play certain clips at some point in time we we need to be able to figure out how we can sorry messing around again <laughs> Well, we're 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 new in the uh, in the YouTube arena, so we uh, we're just being a little bit cautious at the moment with what we play and what we don't, just to uh, get our feet in the water, and then we can, we can right. expand on some of that uh, at some point. But well, we'll uh, we'll figure it out at some point, I'm sure. Uh, yeah. So looking forward to that. There was some interesting posts that we've caught over the last. I know that it, things have been crazy busy lately, but um, some interesting posts. One, we like talking about new products, and I don't know how new this is, um, but I certainly it caught my attention. So there is a dispensary in Manitoba. Correct me if I'm wrong. It, oh, you've got it up. Um, so Rural Buds, Alberta, um, I believe is a dispensary or shop located in Manitoba. And I just caught, I mean, it's not, what do you, what do you call that? ASMR? Is that what the, it's, it's not ASMR. ASMR. Um, those always catch me, but I thought at first, oh, this is an ASMR. I'm going to get addicted here for a minute. Um, and then I realized they're cooking up some mac and cheese. And I, I don't remember if you mentioned this last time, because when we were talking about the poutine, sauce oh the last one i mentioned was the chicken noodle soup oh chicken noodle soup right so we see this this is um by a company it's a it's a brand um and i think you pulled it up but it's astronauts and they are a brand um under icor is that what it is we we can look at that stuff but yeah you know a shout out to um rural alberta buds or, or alberta shop what is it cannabis do we know the actual name of the actual store rural buds cannabis shops rural buds cannabis shops okay correct so Guys, like, and gals, this is what you this do. Is what, this is how you do Instagram. <laughs> this, this, is, this, is, is, this is it. So you've got a retailer in this case um, that's repping a brand. Obviously, retailers need to pump their products that they sell, right? Um, but there's no reason brands can't be doing this as well. You know, there's a lot of chatter on socials about the biggest one that I've seen lately is Red Bull and people going up. Oh, you never see Red Bull um, showing their products in shots. You never, okay, right. But you're Red Bull. Um, you can't get fined or your hand slapped over inducement and lifestyle, right? That's a much different case. So what we I see, mean, what, 
Go ahead. I'll jump in there for a second. You never, yeah, you never see on their like TV commercials with that, but they have fucking Mini Coopers with giant kids oh, and Red Bull driving around town all the time. Of course, you see it. It's everywhere, like, literally everywhere. And I think what they're saying is, you know, show the lifestyle. Okay, well, we can't show lifestyle in cannabis, right? We can't, we can't induce, we can't show lifestyle, we can't give benefit. You know, the day to deal bullshit that was going on, all of that is offside. So, what do you do? You get creative. And in this case, you've got a dispensary that is mixing up the product. They probably paid for it themselves. I, I would highly suspect that astronauts did not comp them with it. Um, maybe it was a sample at some point in time. But here's the thing. I'm not a mac and cheese guy, but now I want to fucking try this. And not only I would that, try this. I want to see what other products astronauts has. Right. And I, I did a quick, quick look. Um, they've got like some, you know, chips and, and different things, um, ketchup chips and nacho chips and, and yeah, whatnot. Yeah, ketchup but, chips, nacho chips, and I believe they have a salt and vinegar one as well. Um, right, and we're not, be, right. we're not talking massive THC, right? We're still in the world in the category of edibles, so you're 10 milligrams THC. But even if it's cool to say, hey, I'm, I whipped up some mac and cheese that was THC, um, you know, infused. <laughs> like, right. Yeah, right? I, I just think it's cool. Um, so yeah, absolutely. Kudos, it looks, looks delicious. kudos to these guys. They, um, you know, they, I yeah. will say this, I will say this, looking at this video, they are not putting entirely enough butter in there for me. <laughs> wait, wait, like when, you, I make, when I, go when I make Kraft mac and cheese, it's yeah. a, it's a fucking spoonful. Like it's, when I was it's a kid, big. when I was a kid, we used to, so we'd have the, you know, everything's gotten smaller. Right. But when I was a kid, there'd be multiple boxes. I mean, this is what we lived on. We, we were not, you know, well off. I mean, powdered milk situation when I was a kid. Right. Um, but what we would do is sneak into the other boxes and take the extra packet of cheese out and we would add that in. And then the last one, you know, to the cupboard to get some mac and cheese, they're SOL. There's no, there's no fucking powdered cheese left. <laughs> that's a, that's a super villain type of move oh, right there. Is what we weren't doing is. it on purpose. It was just a matter of, I want this cheesier than what it is. And then I think late years later, they, they made it so you could buy the actual the extra packs. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, they got you're the turning hand. heroes into supervillains at that point. That's yeah. a, if I if I opened a box and didn't find any cheese, I'd be pissed. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's you know here's the thing. It's nice to see um, you know the products continuing to evolve and different product development happening. And you know how, how do you promote them? You can't say you can't because here's a prime example of how you do. So kudos. Um, this is great. Maybe we can break this out. We can share it with them because everyone needs to see this type. It's not hard to do this stuff. Yeah, we could definitely break this out. It's going to be a little difficult. There's a big old red THC sign right in the front of the screen well, right now. Well. So, <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> yeah. Get creative and with, uh, we've with talked the about this. algorithms. We've talked about this, which is, are we 100% sure we're almost guaranteeing that with those AI algorithms that Meta uses, THC logos, the word use, whatever it might be, try to avoid it. Um, I mean, we're always in InstaJail, always on our high flyer account. Um, but we try to avoid it as much as possible, obviously. So, um, so I love this. Um, anyways, other topic that I saw just as of this morning, but before I think you've got something to go through, um, cause I want to talk Cush Mountain for a second. We can talk Cush Mountain. I was going to show you, um, uh, speaking of kind of new products and we did the Kintor coffee giveaway last week. So love their coffee. Congratulations. If I have time before Kevin shows up, I might have to make another pot of Kintor coffee. I love that coffee. So congratulations to the winner last week. Your uh, stuff should be in the mail any day now. Um, but in you know, light of that, I, I found this ridiculous coffee machine that I what sure... the fuck? I've seen this thing. <laughs> so first of all, I'm an, I'm a coffee geek, right? I'm all over this. Like I'm like yeah, but then I'm looking at it, going, look how fucking big it is. Like it's massive. W where do you have the counter space? It's eight thousand okay, dollars. Okay, well, yeah, that's. I, I mean, I've had a super automatic. Literally wore that fucker out. I, it I also wore looks, it out. It looks like it's used to inseminate elephants. That's what this <laughs> thing looks like. Like, I'm serious. Look at it. it like, it, you know, it does. It's a it, it's a jack off machine for elephants. That's what it looks like. <laughs> I mean, it's I mean, so great. But I what makes me laugh is the it. size of the. It makes me laugh the size of the little cup of coffee that comes out yeah, of this yeah, massive yeah. fucking machine. Well, I mean, it, there's all this it, what you, speculation. What do you think it's doing here? Well, it like, I mean, it's 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 so uh, getting a perfect. I, we should get Todd on to talk about this. He would know better than I would. Um, but getting a perfect cup of. Uh, I'm assuming they're doing espresso here. It's all about pressure. It's all about your grind. It's all about. Um, even distribution of the grinds within the cup so that, you know, I, I still do old school stovetop espresso, right? The um, Bialati. And, and the original machine is in MoMA in New York. Um, it's like 125-year-old um, 
system of making stovetop espresso. It's the simplest version. I could literally take it anywhere. I don't camp, but if I did, I could take it and throw it on top of a fire and it's going to make me a perfect espresso. Perfect. Um, this seems like overkill. So there's always form and function, right? right is this right. more form or more function? I don't know. Um, but you know, first glimpse at you, right? it does look like something you would use for breeding elephants. It's, you know what I'm saying? Like, look at it. Totally. It's insane. I would love to try it. Um, if we can find somewhere that's got one, um, certainly try, I mean, I don't want to process with it and I, I certainly do not want it on my counter. I don't have the room for that. Um, but I'd like to try a coffee or an espresso coming out of it. I kind of feel like I want the machine to be black, not white. I think it would look really nice. Yeah. And black, they're going, but... they're going a little apple on us, right? Yeah. That's just outrageous. That's yeah. just outrageous. But That's anyway, crazy. I you find that interesting. Yeah, uh, that is interesting. And I did catch that and I was looking at it going, yeah, I, I, I was probably high at the time thinking, I need that. I really need that. Uh, what I do need again is another super automatic, but then I'll, I'll just, I'll drink way too much espresso though. That's the problem with that. It's too, too convenient. You just go up, hit a button, it grinds the beans, it puts them in, it gets rid of the pox, it does everything for you. You're done. Is um, that the one we had from uh, Virtuoso at the Ample offices? No, that well, I mean, that was a bigger version of it. But this um, this would be, think, high end when you go to, I don't know, a Starbucks. You know, I, I don't drink a lot of Starbucks. But if you were to go to a Starbucks, those machines that they have, they're a little over the kill the for home use. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it grinds the beans, it puts it in the, you know, in your, I don't know, puck maker, whatever the fuck they call that. Um, but yeah, it, it just takes care of everything. So yeah. Um, Cush Mountain had a good post this morning. We should talk about that. And it's something that, that we've talked about a few times. Um, what defines craft cannabis, right? We used to so use just for it. The, uh, yeah, just for the listeners at home who aren't on video, I'm going to read the post out if that's all right. Yeah, go ahead and do um, that. It's, it's really short, but uh, this is again uh, from Cush Craft about what makes up. Cush uh, Mountain Craft, yep. Craft, uh, sorry, Cush Mountain Craft, yeah. So it starts with uh, what makes um, craft cannabis craft to you? We had a really good conversation with a member of the BC Craft Farmers Co-op yesterday, and we got to discussing what defines a true craft grower. Everyone says they're craft, but the term seems to be losing its meaning in the industry. What truly defines craft cannabis? Craft to us isn't about the size of your operation, but a practice you employ. Just as there are large craft productions, there are small craft productions that aren't worthy of the title. To us, craft is about curating our product to perfection and always trying to do better, striving for constant improve, sorry, qu- constant improvement of quality at every step in the process. It's knowing that no matter how many years of experience you have, there's always something you can do to better your product. And that's what makes a craft grower different from the rest. As a craft grower, you are cultivating unique products, uh, a unique product bat- every batch. There is no one size fits all, and you must have the ability to anticipate problems before they happen. Uh, you have to recognize and smell the, sorry, recognize smell and ensure taste matches uh, its scent. You need to identify smoothness, the stickiness, and pay attention to the texture and how it burns. On the weekend of April 19th to 21st, Tyson um, from Cush Mountain Craft will be participating in a panel at the BC uh, Craft Farmers Co-op Summit in Prince George discussing this very topic. Um, and they're basically just asking to drop your comments on what you believe craft cannabis actually means uh, this day and age. So, uh, yeah. yeah, this is, this is a really good one. Um, I'm sure Cush Mountain Craft. So Tyson, we know Tyson, Justine, the team over there at Cush Mountain Craft. Um, great team. We haven't had a chance to try their products yet. Um, but certainly looking forward to that when we can, we've talked about this before, right? And, and when the introduction of micro licensing came along, it was, is that craft? I mean, the intent from what I understand was to incorporate those craft growers, but the term craft is now up for debate, right? Um, the closest is, and, and what I'd like to see is when you go into OCS, there's, I think it says Ontario, they have that yellow symbol. Um, I'm not sure what it is exactly, but I think it says craft cannabis. So I'm not sure how Ontario cannabis store OCS defines craft for us. When micro licensing became available, that was kind of carved out for craft cannabis, right? Yeah. I'm still on the fence, right? Because, you know, to, to the point of this, if it's Tyson that wrote this or Justine, I'm not sure. Um, to their point, craft doesn't have to be defined by the scale of your operation necessarily, right? Craft is a continuous improvement of your skills and honing of your craft, right? Um, I've seen large scale being in them where I'm like, holy shit, this is like, if I were to go large scale, this is how I would design my rooms coming from a, you know, an old OG grower, 
you know, rooms were manageable. Um, one of the best I saw, and I haven't been there forever, I can't vouch for it, um, was Flower, the Flower Corporation, right? Okanagan Valley, that's where they were. Jason Broom used to be with them. We'd go out, if you remember Jason, the, the, the biggest hard ass, right? He knew what he wanted when it came to things. But the way that they had their facility structured was it was a bunch of rooms, almost like micro, right? And these rooms were completely individually climate controlled. Um, the way that they were doing their batching, they would keep one cultivar per room. Like it was very micro, but at large scale, right? And there was just a bunch of rooms repeated, um, which is not unlike a lot of facilities, but it seemed like when they built out flour, that was specifically what they were trying to achieve. Um, so does it mean this, like, so we could look just at licensing, right? Standard versus micro licensing. And that could be for cultivation. That could be for processing, um, sales, a little bit different. Um, but it's a good point. And I, and I'd love to break this out and, and see what does everyone else think defines craft cannabis? Um, take for instance, and we'll, we should ask Kevin this, but take for instance, Kevin, Kevin was an off grid grower, right? He had a smaller micro license. Um, you know, we need to find out he's scaling up operations. I guarantee if Kevin's moving product to market, it's going to meet air quote craft quality. It's going to, otherwise he just won't, he won't move it to market. I know. So then it becomes, okay, well, if he is a standard license versus a micro license, what does that mean? So um, let us know in the comments. I mean, if we get this broken out and you can tell us what you think craft is, how do you define craft? We'll make sure that these comments are shared with Cush Mountain Craft um, so that they can take this in to their discussions. Yeah. Like to me, to me, the word craft in my head is it should be synonymous with, you know, artisan and, and boutique. Those are two very familiar words to me that I would associate with craft. They should be of the highest quality of the, you know, and I think Tyson makes some, or whoever wrote this post for, for <clears throat> Push Mountain Craft makes some really good points there. And and it's, it should not just be about the size of your operation, right? Right. And, right. Um, it should be synonymous to me. When I think of craft cannabis, I should think of artisan, thoroughly thought out, attention to detail, mm -hmm. high quality product. Right. Um, well, to me is what, what, what craft And we've should seen be. this, right? You can have a micro air quote craft grower that puts shit product to market. Correct. They do. And you can have large scale that puts shit product to market. And the adverse, right? Which is large scale, good product. So, you know, it's, I think it's going to start to lose the term. Now in beverage, right? Especially within the beer industry, we see craft used a lot more. And typically it's smaller operations, um, not full nationwide distribution. And that's typically considered craft, right? Um, but does that mean that, that that's what it needs to be? Because we want to see these micros, the micro licenses survive and grow and scale. If they're doing really well at a smaller scale operation, would love to see, much like Kevin, would love to see them full scale because what that means is they can now get their great quality products to the rest of Canada. In those smaller micros, they have limited distribution because the product supply, if you, if you create demand, you're not going to be able to keep up in that micro world. There's just no way. If, you, if you're looking for Canadian wide, distribution, you're not going to keep up with, you know, 200 square meters. There's just no way. Even if you're getting eight crops a year off, which is tough, seven for sure, eight tough, you're not keeping up. And then you want, you want to go into other category formats, right? So now you're going to take your flower that everyone loves. You want to make them into a pre-roll. That's one thing. Now you want to make them into a concentrate or a vape. That's another thing. So it's, it's tough. It's a tough market. I, I'd like to see some reform on even those regulations, right? Why does it have to be confined to 200 square meters? Was that corporate, can air quote, corporate can uh, cannabis? We've seen that a lot, right? Fuck corporate cannabis. Let's define corporate cannabis now, right? And, and Kevin does a good job of that as well. So we'll ask him about these, uh, these things. So check out Kush Mountain Craft. Uh, check out um, the comments. We want to see your comments for sure. Um, let us know. What do you think? What defines craft cannabis? Yeah, it's here. Cool. All right. What else we got? You were mentioning something, yeah, you were mentioning something earlier about um, someone's brought out some pre-rolls with a cigarette filter. Yeah, and it, so I think it's, uh, where did I put that here? Um, give me one second. Uh, the, the brand specifically, I'll, I'll find the brand and post it in the comments after, but um, yeah, so they were using regular old cigarette filters. Uh, Not old as in used. You know. <laughs> 
<laughs> not all this is used. Yeah. yeah. Old fashioned, you know, the, the, the cigarette fills, the, the more foamy ones. I don't mm-hmm. even know what the material is, what you would call that. Probably asbestos. More of like a, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I was just, I was reading through this thread of, of people kind of ripping this apart because of the, they were saying that, you know, uh, inhaling through that, trying to draw through that, it's getting clogged very, very quickly rather than your typical filter you see in most right? The, the folded cardboard or the folded right. paper, thick cardstock kind of thing. Yeah. This is a traditional uh, cigarette filter and basically two or three hauls in and, and they literally weren't able to draw anything else through it because it's so clogged. Oh, right? I just wondered if you, okay. Yeah. No, I was that makes wondering sense. If you would, if you had seen, um, and, and, and <clears> everyone <throat> in the comments was saying, this seems like a very, you know, uh, obvious thing not to do is to use a traditional cigarette filter for this. Right. But, was wondering if you've seen that before and if, if you, you know. No, not specifically using a, like a cigarette filter. Now, when you mentioned clog, okay, so let's, let's look at traditionally an air quote filter within a joint is not meant to filter out the harsh chemicals and the plant matter material when it combusts, right? It's meant to, one, keep the end from crushing, right? That's number one. Number two is to keep any, let's say it was a loose pack, a loose roll to keep from getting lettuce in your fit, in your, in your tea, right? That's what it was originally right. meant for. So, and then, so the earliest that I ever saw the closest, uh, of a, a cigarette format was Redican. So Redican, Kenny Hill was a Indian tobacco individual. And, um, I don't think that's the correct term now, but whatever it is. Um, anyway, so he had been in tobacco for the longest time and because he was in the tobacco industry, he had access to manufacturing equipment. And when, I don't know if he was an investor or one of the founders, what it was, but he was involved with Redican and helped to introduce the Redican readies. And that was the closest format that you would see compared to a cigarette in the earlier days, right? So 2018, 19, um, something like that. But it was still a paper filter. It was a rolled up paper filter that was in it. It was not an actual tobacco filter um, or cigarette filter. There would be, because even just a regular joint, relighting it, trying to light it, it's, if, if it's a resinous, good flower product, chances are it's going to take quite a bit to get it to smoke and clear again. Um, and you end up frustrated and then you break them open, you roll them into another joint because you don't want to waste it and get rid of the tarnished shit at the end. Um, but I could see that 100%. If they're using like the cotton-ish asbestos type filters, I mean, that's a recipe for a fucking disaster as far as I'm concerned. Tenzo. Is that the name? Tenzo. That's the one. That's the one. Tenzo. That's what it um, so we're not, you know, poo-pooing on any product innovation that they're looking at. Proof is in the pudding. We need to try it ourselves. Um, we're not going to review it, um, but it would be interesting to know what, what are others saying. Um, when you're smoking a joint, there's something different than smoking a cigarette. Right. hundred percent. Um, and, and the experience is that, you know, you hold it differently, right? You light it differently. Sometimes you butt it out, um, you know, in a joint, you inhale it differently. You yeah, inhale it's it a, differently. A it's a longer inhale. So are they trying to keep out plant matter combustion? Like the, you know, the, the negative toxins and shit that come with that. I, I don't know. Um, but I could see that as an issue where, yeah, it would potentially clog up. Right, right. So we'll have to see mm, see if we can find out more about that. I'm sure, sure as shit. If there's an issue, let's go to subreddits. <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll yeah. find it there if there's something going on. There is, yeah, no shortage of people who are willing to say whatever the hell they yeah. want to say on there. So, yeah. um, yeah, I'll keep my eye on that. One. Update I'll next episode for sure, for yeah. sure. Yeah. All right. Anything um, else we uh, we want to go over before we bring Kevin in? No, I think I think. Uh, we're, we're about 30 minutes in, so I think we'll uh, we'll take a break from there and get back with... Uh, we don't want to keep royalty waiting, right? So um, Never let the king wait. I want audio clips so bad. We, we just need to either get bigger or figure out licensing because I've got um, like run DMC and stuff in my head, like down with the king and, you know, like that's... Kevin needs to enter with that. Um, such an OG. This guy... Did you know he was an Eastie? So he's originally from the East Coast. Oh, see, I hard, thought he was always West Coast. Those fuckers are hard out there. And, and not if you moved out. Like, Ian, if you're listening, which I hope you're listening because you're part of High Flyer, um, you're not hard yet, buddy. You'll get there. A little, a little more, a little more ocean wind, maybe. You, you can't be hard when you're a Red Wings fan. Let's just, <laughs> just, just say what it is. <laughs> yeah, that's probably part of the issue. <laughs> yeah, we love you, Ian. <laughs> All right, let's take a break when we get back. Kevin Barner from Royal Harvest.
Hey, what's up everyone? Have you ever considered medical cannabis? You probably should. Chances are you have insurance benefits that will cover that. We at High Flyer Media have partnered with leading medical cannabis provider, Mendo Medical, to bring you an exclusive offer. If you sign up or register using code FLYWITHUS, you'll get 15% off your first order. But the advantage is far beyond that. The selection is one of the best we've ever seen, curated by Jay Schwartz himself. He ensures that every product going out the door meets his high quality standards. Again, sign up or register with Mendo Medical using code FLYWITHUS. All right, welcome back, everyone. We're joined by His Highness, Kevin Varner, Royal Harvest. Kevin, hey how guys. the fuck are you, man? It's good. Blessing to be on here with you guys. Uh, as you guys know, we go back a little ways. You know, you guys reached out some while ago doing your uh, high flyer thing, uh, wanting to help us guys that are trying to get into the industry, find a way to get ourselves known a little bit more. Um, and instantly that uh, connected me with you guys. I seen your broad picture, what you guys were doing, you know, as well as building a business. You're also building a platform uh, that's allowing people to create, you know, ways to be known, heard and seen. And I'm going to say, guys, hats off again. So much love and respect because here's just another chapter of what you guys are building. So proud of you guys as a team and a company. And I'm very blessed to uh, be part of you guys and working with you guys. So I just wanted to start off with that, man. Thank you guys so oh, much. Thanks. Well, that's, I couldn't I couldn't have done a better plug myself. That was that's just a, that's that's <laughs> it. We're just gonna grab that snippet and that will live forever. Yeah, <laughs> no, perfect, we appreciate man. that. That's perfect. that's awesome. And you know, our our ability to do what we do is certainly because of individuals and brands like yourself that are they're open to it, right? Um, yeah. Other individuals are like, no, nah, we don't see it. Or your account's too small or this. And we're like, okay, that's fine. We'll grow and then we'll Absolutely. crush you. Well, every, you know what? <laughs> Everybody starts somewhere. And if that's right. you that's only right. have one person and you stop because it's only one person, will you ever make that two? Will you ever make that three? Will you ever get to that point? So, I mean, that's where people and places and things are made. And I'm being honest, that's what's going on with myself right now with this whole industry, you know, as much fire as you grow, whatever you do, man, I'm telling you, hold on if you're into the legit cannabis market. I mean, literally, there are so many aspects that I had no clue that you have to cover before you come in. I mean, from right from a guy like me coming into a, a micro knowing nothing and make sure, you know, those guys come in and make sure you know if you don't have your licensing who you're going to work with, who you're going to be processing with. Because, I mean, if you get put in the wrong hands, it really makes for a even harder climb. So, I mean, trust me, there's so much stuff that we've been navigating through. But I mean, if you stop at that first hurdle, stop at only having one person watching you, you're never going to become what you're supposed to. So, you know what? doesn't matter the size of it. I'm blessed to be on here, you know, just chopping it up with you guys, right? So. Oh, that's awesome. And and I think, you, I mean, you got so many great points in there. Um, one is <laughs> success is only ever seen when you get, when you don't give up, right? That's, that's the right. biggest common denominator of all success stories, which is, I just didn't give up. I mean, it got hard. I felt like, you know, staying in bed and not getting up, but you do it every day, day in, day out. But it's not unlike your previous life, you know, before you came into the legal market. I mean, it's a hustle. It's a hustle yeah. every day. Who wants yeah. cannabis, right? Grow the best, supply the best, get the best Absolutely. margins you can. And then now you're met with all this red tape. And we're going to get into all of that because this yeah. is exactly what this is. I mean, when we did our test, you joined us spur of the moment, sent you a text. I'm like, Hey, Kevin, what are you doing, buddy? <laughs> you're like, I'm like, are you in your grow room? Cause that'd be pretty fucking cool. And you were, I was. and yeah. you jumped right on. I mean, this is, this is the epitome of how you support this industry. Right. And we yeah. are non cannabis touching well, other than smoking it and consuming it. Um, but for the most part, it's difficult and we're here to help promote and help those brands rise. Right. Because yeah. th they need to meet the consumer demand and they need yeah. to be top of mind. And yeah, you can do it at the retail level and the bud tender level, which is important. But Absolutely. at some point in time, that changes, right? Where you want your consumers being your biggest advocate. And that's that's certainly yeah. what we try to do. So yeah, I'm um, no, it's great. I, was, I was joking with uh, with Wes earlier. Um, so we're going to let's let's go way back, right? Because this is the platform to do this, which is let's tell the story behind the legacy. And you've certainly Man. built and are building a legacy. And I mean, personally, you shared some stories, dude, that I'm like, yeah. I've, I've been close to some of those in my history, but what the fuck? Yeah, so no, I, I mentioned, I mentioned to Wes, I'm like, he's an Eastie originally. And, yeah. and Wes is like, really? Right. <laughs> because one of our partners is in the East coast, but he's three years removed. I think something like that. So, um, anyways, let's go back to the East coast. When did it all start to happen for Kevin? Well, it, you know, I, I, I grew up in a neighborhood, um, 
you know, we didn't come from much. My parents were always hardworking individuals and weren't about cannabis, but I had great buddies growing up and I came from a community where everybody's parents was about weed, was about cannabis. It was about the medical side of it. it they believed in it as well as they knew in Nova Scotia, there was, there was not much money, you know, and that's just the reality, the highest taxes in the country, et cetera, et cetera. So it was a means for some of them as well. And I mean, started off at like 10, 11 years old, helping my buddy's old man and stuff you know, lug dirt, teaching us about leaves and the principles of sun and the water and, you know, how it works, just teaching us the simple sciences. And he would always say, you know, you're going to go to grow stores and you're going to hear this and that and use this stuff, try this stuff. He's like, when you get a program and you keep it to the simple science and he goes, you will completely be successful. And it has been when I took it back to those roots, it's literally cut, clean, fill the room, flip nonstop. Right. So it's, all about that. So it started, you know, at that young age. And then by the time I got 12, getting rolling into my early teens, I seen how much my parents, how hard they worked and how much we still struggled and couldn't make things meet. So I remember, you know, my mom, what are these popping on the window ledge and, you know, 12 years old, cracked my first seeds. And I mean, started gorilla growing from there. And then from that, it went, you know, in with the older guys learning how to, uh, you know, start with the indoor grows. Like it was so far back. We knew if we put CO2 in our room, it would help. We would go down to light barbecues, turn them on for a bit and shut them off. Like no monitors, no anything, yeah. <laughs> just, you know, doing this kind of stuff, knowing when help. And it's been, that's how long of a lifetime it has been for me making changes, trying new things to get to the point where I am. And, you know, even to this day, you know, there's stuff that's out of growers hands, right? Like not every room is going to be your smasher, you know, the, the, the plus thing with my program is even if I have a bad day, that weed is going to smoke insane and beautiful. I may not get the weights all the time. You know, you can have equipment malfunctions. And like I say, even the environment outside as your seasons change really changes the indoor of your grow rooms, your humidities, your temperatures, your climate. So we're trying to balance that and find the best, you know, way to the finish line at that. So it started off to me, you know, as 12 years old, cracking seeds on my parents' window ledge. And it's been a lifetime of adjustments you know, slips, falls, and uh, to be where it is yeah. right now. Yeah, man, you've brought up some really good points there. A um, couple we need to touch on. So that's a long ways back. I mean, starting that early into it, right? Obviously, you know, individual cheat or, or teaching you was about the plants because you're yeah. not you're not going to. It's one thing about this is weed, this is consumption. That's that's completely different than your first yeah. experience. Your first experience yeah. was. This is nature. Yeah. This is how you tend to nature if you want yep. to play God in such a yep. way. And then, and, you know, you fast forward to where yeah. you get into grow room settings and you're playing God inside yeah. A, yeah. a setting, right? Because because as us as kids, when I was learning at that age, there was no talk about them telling us about selling it and making money. We right. were kids and they believed in it so much that they were teaching us about the properties of it and what it could do. And they're how they seen it and what they believed it could do. So, I mean, at that early age, I believed in it so much. I already knew that this could be something special that helps not just our, you know, our industry in Canada, but the world. Right. So, Damn. you know, I can remember being 12, 13, 14 years old saying to my parents, like, this is what I want to do forever. I don't know how I'm going to do this or how it's even possible, but this is what I want to do. And, you know, I'm very blessed to be a, have the opportunities I do because trust me, there are opportunities we got to keep working to make them come. But the, you know, I'm blessed for the opportunities I have right now. Mm -hmm. it, it's funny that he would have mentioned to you, you know, you'll go into grow stores and you hear all these different um, aspects of growing and how to do it. It's that's the advice I had early on. So a really close friend of mine that taught me how to grow, um, he would never call himself a master grower, nor would I. I think that term has been thrown yeah, around way either, too like, much, right? Yeah, I mean, I even use it either like Remo, right? He's even like, yeah don't call me a master grower like that. You know, I'm not a master grower. Um, but that was the advice he said, you, you know, cause we get my first room set up. He helps me get my MMAR introduces me to the lawyers and the doctors and get this, get this. Right. And I would ask questions. He like, he's like, what the fuck are you doing? You're in Google again, aren't you? He's like, just follow what I'm telling you, learn what I'm telling you and you'll have success. First, first crop. Um, we were sitting like 3.25 per light. Right. Beautiful. Then I do it on my own. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know what I did. He goes, you fucking got on Google is what you did. Why are you adapting things when I told you not to? Right. Yeah. So there's a simplicity there huh. that if you stick with it, yep. you'll have successes. Right. But it's too much clutter. There's too much information going on. 
So you, so you, you spent, I want to go back to the, 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 yeah. the, the East coast. Um, yeah, so absolutely. you were in, you were in Nova Scotia or New Brunswick, sorry, where no, Nova Scotia, Nova Scotia. That's where, uh, Ian is. So Ian, Ian and Ryan are out there, actually the two other partners. Um, it's but... actually, you know, it's a beautiful, beautiful province, but I'll tell you it's rough. You know, like yeah. it really is. People don't get it. Like it's as small. It, there's nothing there. It has the second largest non-freezing port in the world. So right off the bat, anything coming from overseas, you know, comes right into that harbor, gets offloaded there, off to Montreal, and then to the rest of the rest of the world. Right. So there's a there's a wow. big hub of, and I'm not saying little business. There's a big hub of big business there, and it kind of just spawns out and it's, it's it's a very rough place you know i grew up with around amazing people you know amazing situations you know even situations that i fell out of friends we've lost still so much love for them but it's such a hard place almost to say you know what i mean that it's like everybody's like all in on all they're right, doing right. so it's it's, it's yeah. a very uh you know, I mean, you have to be right. Like if that's if that's what your surrounding is, um, so that would also be very um, conducive to some weed coming in and out. <laughs> it's the, the largest non-freezing port, right? I mean, you got to yeah, be thinking. It, there's for me though when when it came to that when I, I say that that is was more different stuff. Like there was hey. either big loads of motherships of hash and yeah, beyond. Yeah. Yeah, all the weed that we really seen in Nova Scotia was grown there, or we was had brought in from BC, right? So it was our the weed in Nova Scotia. Like I said, I know so many growers from there that moved out east. That was kind of like the dream for mm-hmm. all of us that were involved in the game at that point was to get to a point and come out to BC and do our thing, right? So, so on that, when did you when did you cut ties with Nova Scotia and you're like, I am BC bound? Was there any well, trips in between or stops in between or straight to BC? No, well, it it, it kind of went like they like Nova Scotia was great, and I had to look at my life. Like there was a lot of p- friends being killed, you know. Like I was fire bombed at home, home invaded at gunpoint. Guys had to wear bulletproof vests, and I am man. Listen, I don't even like hurting bugs. You know what I mean? But you know, it start. You know, it just you're put into a situation and make some decisions that put you where you are. So I looked at my life at this point, and I'm like, man, I've had so many friends, and I mean, it's come close. You know, a couple times, I'm like, it's. What is it? None of that's worth it to me. Money isn't worth it to me. Time, life, and everything else is what's important. Do you know what I mean? So at that point, uh, my brother was working in Alberta uh, on the oil patch. And, you know, this is like my mid-20s, right? Mm -hmm. So I decided, um, you know what, let me go out and do that. So I went right out there, started working the oil patch. But as soon as I touched down, it was like, Grow lights in the basement, and the way we went. Right? <laughs> yeah, so you had them in your in your carry on. <laughs> right, well, I drove. Well, yeah. It wasn't it wasn't big, but it was like the, it just smokes different. So it was hard. Right. You know, I I wanted to keep grow, make sure I was growing. You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. So that was mm-hmm. the fact. And then from there, I got into a you know a little bit of when there was breakup and stuff. I started you know finding access to you know make some extra money. Da da da. Without saying too much, and then. Yeah, then a couple of years later after doing that, I had made some really good connections and friends that were in BC, doing a lot of work with them on that end. And I was like, hey, you know, um, at that point I was good. I didn't have to really do anything for work. And uh, right, right. I decided to move to BC. And then that's when I ended up taking a huge hit and losing everything. So Jeez. back to the trenches. That's rough. Um, so what year approximately was it when you went to BC then? Um. I'd, it's, it's about probably about nine years ago now, without whatever okay. that is. Really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, so what year is it now? Two thousand five? No, yeah. two thousand fifteen. Sorry, two thousand fifteen. My math, my mathing is sucking. That's okay. So is mine. <laughs> That's why I just went with the years, but, right? No, but you ask you to run a nutrient recipe, you probably, oh yeah, no problem. I mean, this yeah, many milliliters, we well, got this one. Even, yeah. <laughs> in school, like when I was a kid in school, I used to say to my mom. I don't think it's going to ask me about a train that arrived here and did this. Why don't they just right. say, if you took four pounds, broke it down to this, then you needed six quarters over <laughs> yeah. to this. I yeah, said, exactly. I'm going to fucking ace my math exam, yeah. but unfortunately it doesn't so, work that way. It was always the toughest when, so when I made my legal foray into cannabis, it was, everything was kilograms and grams, right? Yeah. So, and you know this from the old days, it's, there's grams up to a point. So you hit an ounce and then we're talking peas, right? Or yep. QPs, half peas. Peas. Yep. And, yep. 
right? But the math was weird because we're going grams and then somewhere in our head. So we were in that dual system, right? Which was, you know, you've got the metric and imperial system battling in your head for what's, yeah. but we'd always ruled it was, well, what do they say in weed? How do we sell weed? And that's what matters. Um, yeah. And it's, it's, how did you handle the transition from, you know, myself, it was right at, so I was running magnetic ballasts and then I went to digi ballasts and then I never went into LED. Obviously, LED has come a long ways. I don't think you could survive these days running high pressure sodium on a magnetic or digital ballast anymore. I think some still do, but I could just imagine like the overhead cost must be tremendous. But you run all you run all LED now. Yeah. No. Um, like I said, I've always been, you know, bulbs. Like I've always been the big <laughs> metal, you know. It's, metal halides in the veg room and all, uh, pressure sodiums the in the yeah 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 oh yeah bob so i did one of my last medicals had uh leds and i was super impressed with it so and i did like i said the quality was the same if not better so i mean I, and i love it i'm having a good result right now at the new place too so i mean the quality's through the roof so we'll that's just keep good that's good rolling and well, you know, and we want to we want to talk about the new one, but I want to I want to keep going on this this yeah. path of how did Kevin? So you end up in BC now. The old the old ways of doing this, and you probably even I think you touched on a story personally one time when we were just chatting over the phone. But yeah, I'll tell the you old ways here. of doing things were this. Correct me if I'm wrong, because I think it resonates across the vast majority of the legacy crowd, which is you had a license or maybe were thinking about a license in the MMAR space. You would find a property that was undervalued and needed a lot of work. Now, what areas can you air quote launder or move cash through? Construction and trade. So you buy a dilapidated property, you set up your grow, you cash in on your grow. And as that money's trickling in, you reside the house, you re drywall it, you put new eaves and soffit and fascia and roof. And then all of a sudden you take a $200,000 property and over time, chances are it's worth a million, million and a half, depending, right? I mean, this market nowadays and especially BC, but you know, you could at least, it wasn't always about cashing in on the flip of the house or the property. It was, you got to do something with the cash. You have yeah, well, to do something. Right? see. Okay. And now that you say that that was a huge problem for me, I came from a family. Like I said, we come from nothing. I wasn't educated on money. Money was always thought of as hard to come by. And this is a big thing that people are feeling now. It's so rough now that everybody's got locked in their head that money's hard to get. So you know what happens when you think that way? Money's hard to get. So, 100%. you know, I had no guidance with cash. So this is where I, you know, I have, I was falling at a point out of control. I was stacking huge without even saying what I had paper wise. Right. But I had a, the, the worst part is this is what's so shitty about this game and the way a lot of people are. I had some close friends. We all kind of did stuff together. So they knew one of them obviously had some hard times, didn't say anything. I ended up at moving to BC and because I didn't make right plays on my money there, you know, I had just cash. Do you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Yep, so yep. I was an easy target. He ended up getting, you know, dropping my name, getting me set up. Next, you know, I'm kidnapped, fucking almost fingers got off, you know. Sm you know, shotgun down the throat, wrapped in plastic. So, and I'm just being Jeez. for real, right? Like, it, yeah. it left me so scarred. I kid you not, that I literally, I don't even know how to explain it. I can remember times hiding in my front yard under trees because I thought a car was down the road. Like, I'm being real. I don't never oh, open up about a lot I of get this it. shit ever. I get it. But yeah, it, it's it's you know, I wish I had been smarter at that point about where I put my money that wasn't accessible. Lesson learned now, mm -hmm. right? And right. now I'm at a point where I'm so negative trying to build this thing up that there's no right. paper to get. But yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm just saying that, you know, I woke up at one point when this market was in the hole with absolutely nothing, which is the love for this plant, the heart to know that this is what I want to do. And I've been at it for seven years since that point. And mm. then on that process, I started building again, making some money. This is when I was still black market. Me and uh, what my ex-girlfriend had bought a house. And, you know, amazing woman, but we just ended up, you know, people grow apart. Um, we, we bought the hose for 400 and, um, we were, again, finally had got some smarts to myself, started putting my money into it. Just had it appraised for about $1.1 million. We're going to get ready to flip it, split the profit and go our way. And I was sleeping one night and I woke up and I'm like, something's going on. As soon as I got my bearings and looked, the whole back of the hose was engulfed in flames. I literally... I just got her kids out. She worked night shift at the time. Jeez. I went back in for my dogs. I just got my dogs out. But in that process, I had burnt my feet so bad I couldn't wear shoes for a month and a half. Her and I were in the process of splitting. So like I said, this is about seven years ago now. 
So the next morning I woke up in, and this is after taking my first loss, trying to get back. This mm -hmm. next morning after that, I woke up in a hotel with my boxer shorts, my two dogs, and my feet burnt so bad I couldn't wear shoes. And again, that's all I had seven years ago. The market was diving. I was working in holes. No one would listen to me when I was telling them what they had to do because I get it. The market is tough. Even yeah. They've even made the legit market tough that it's hard to put in what you need to put in to get that real deal product, right? So, you know, it's, you know, one of those things, just guys, keep your head down no matter what happens in life. You know, like, don't let anything throw you off of your path of what you want and just keep rolling. And I mean, that's where I'm at. Like, I'm still struggling. I still haven't taken a paycheck. I still am trying to clear up, you know, business situations. For me, first coming in this market, you know, there's so many hiccups and headaches for us to get to where we need to be. But you just got to stay solid in your mind and head to get to that point, right? Yeah, like that. <laughs> that's enough for anyone just to give up, right? And and you talk about, you know, hiding under trees and you're not sure what's going on. I remember without that caliber, the paranoia that yeah. would come, right? I could hear a, a, a car door close half a block away and I'm peeking out curtains and I'm locking doors and I'm like, okay, what the fuck's going on? Is it the cops? Is it someone coming to get a stash? What's going on, right? And living in that constant, yeah. I mean, if there's anything that, you know, the the regulated market has changed for us is we can breathe a little yeah. bit more, absolutely, right? So, but it's still there. It's, it know, hasn't gone anywhere. No, it really hasn't. And uh, what was it you just said there for a minute? What about the, just the paranoia? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. That, is it. that paranoia is so real, like with the police and everything else. But I've always lived when I was balling and when I was, you know, moving a bunch of stuff, wherever I was, I lived with a paranoia that whatever I think they know, I know they knew that much more. I had shared a story with you that I'll probably, uh, of how real being smart on that paranoia is. We have, we were back when I was back home for a while, a buddy of mine had got popped, but they were after everybody. Right. And I knew it. So I was one of those guys that was always like, Hey, it's time to take a breather. So I jumped on a plane and I went up to Calgary for a little bit with some buddies. So listen, this is kind of a different story. So I was there for like six months. Right. And I became friends with these guys that were from Calgary, a couple of black guys that were from Calgary became really good buddies. And uh, one night I'm out staying at a friend's in Kananaskis and the phone rings. And uh, so my buddy's like, hey, do you want to go to Vancouver? I'm like, yeah, sure, let's go. So I just had left back home because of the heat that was going on six months ago, right? So the next morning they come pick me up and I get in the vehicle and there's my buddies and then there's a full car and then there's a Mexican guy in the passenger seat and he's passed out. And when they pick me up, everybody's got beat Corona open on their lap, vehicles <laughs> filled with smoke. So, all right, let's go. So we get in, I crack a beer, we're smoking weed and talking. And my buddy looks at me and he's like, Kevin, there's something about this guy I got to tell you, but I don't want to tell you. I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, don't worry about it. Just have a good time. You don't have to worry. Let's go. Right. So I'm like, okay. And as we're driving, I kind of like think for a minute, I wonder what this is, but I just forget about it because we're having fun. So anyway, this Mexican guy kind of sobers up a little bit, comes up from being passed out, and he turns around and he looks in the back seat and he goes, I'm an undercover police officer. And my buddy <laughs> looks over at me and says, this is what I didn't want to tell you. And he yeah, goes, well, thanks a lot, asshole. You could have told me when I got in the car, right? <laughs> I know. And then, but I, and then Here. the guy says, and we think there's people shipping weed from out west to out east. And he points right at me. I'm the only guy in there from out east. Everybody else is from either like, another country or out west and he's like and we think you're doing it he goes but i just got divorced i lost my wife my kids my hosts i just lost my dog as well he goes i just want to have a good time forget about any of this and i'll let everybody know that like my superior know nothing's going on and at this point nothing was really going on i got away sure. to be away from things i was just kind of living so mm -hmm. I'm wondering to myself as we're driving, is this for real or is this guy just in a car with some guys he doesn't know well and he's saying something that, you know, kind of maybe keeps him safe. So as we're driving, one of my buddies is, uh, is a black guy. He's driving. We're doing about 160. I kid you not. We're going through the Coca Cola at this point, going in towards Vancouver, right? We're doing about 160, still drinking, smoking weed. And there's the RCMP in the middle of the road with a radar gun and you see how mad they are. They're <laughs> pull the fuck over, pull the fuck. And as we're pulling over, it's just... this black guy starts hitting on the Mexican guy who's about my color saying, yeah. give me your driver's license. Give me your driver's license. I don't have a driver's license. 
So this, the Mexican guy has my buddy his driver's license. As the cops come into the window, smoke barreling out the window, he hands his car. Oh God. He hands him the, the, the insurance papers, the, the other guy's driver's license. Yeah, yeah, the he's clearly not black. Yeah, car. he's clearly, yeah. clearly not black. The yeah. cop goes back to the car, takes that unusual long time that yeah. it always feels like when you're sweating. Oh, yeah. Comes back with like a $60 ticket. Is like, okay, guys, just keep your speed down. Have a good day. As we pulled off and got on the site, the guy in the front seat turned around and said, I told you. He rang my name. Cena was on duty. Do not detain and let us go. We went to Vancouver. We partied that so much fun together. They oh dropped me off God. back where they picked me up. Never seen from him again. But about four months later, I went back home because I wasn't staying out there forever. I went back home and literally I couldn't get gas, piss or anything without. <laughs> they were oh all over me. So I know it cost them some money to come out there and try to visit me. Right. But it was just one of those crazy stories that. Something Holy. greater than myself, as I yeah. always say, has guided me and has blessed me enough to be where I am. When I look back at everything that's happened and the lessons that I pull from it and seeing where I am now, what the potential is of what I could create for not just myself, but for so far beyond, as you guys know, it all makes sense. Like all yeah, these stories, yeah. all these lessons, all these losses, they really teach you what's important in life why you're doing things, you know, the importance of all that. So it's it's really, you know, I take from all of those. I don't look and cry about the losses. I laugh at the lessons and then just keep going, right? Well, and you've certainly picked yourself up from each situation and continue to move on. But I think the, you know, the smarts and what Kevin has with this is you learn from it. I have yeah. so many friends or loose encounters that they just never learned. And they they're the individuals that always seem to be like the bad luck just follows them. And I yeah. saw something, it actually reminded me of you. Um, there was there was someone, I can't remember, it was an Instagram reel or something. And it was a lady psychologist and she was talking about luck. And she asked the interviewer, um, she said, you know, if I asked you, how many red cars did you see on the way to the studio today? Could you tell me? And and he's like, uh, I don't know. I, I, Maybe he goes, I, I don't know. I don't think so. He goes, I'm sure I saw some. And she's like, right. She said, but what if I asked you to look for those red cars on the way to the studio? Would you be able to tell me how many you saw? He said, of course, I'd be looking for them. She goes, that's luck. She said, make no mistake that that's luck. Luck yeah. is when you have your eyes open and yeah. you are looking for something yeah. that is luck. And yeah. I'm like, holy shit. Why did I have to wait till 48 years old to learn that that's where luck is coming from? Now, is Absolutely. that true or not? But it makes a lot of sense, right? And, it does. And I, it does. I think for yourself, you know, we've, we've, we see you're, you're very open, you know, you're sharing your life and personal stories. And we love that you're as open with us. And, you know, this is the friendship that we've built that you can be yeah. open, but the audience needs to hear this stuff because yeah. one, it's interesting as fuck. I mean, that's number one. Number two is don't think like, you know, if we fast forward and we're, we're chatting, on legacies in four or five years. And Kevin's got multiple facilities throughout Canada, exporting throughout the world. And, you know, frosted fruitcake and all these other, you know, cultivars are the best. Sitting on a real throne. Sitting on a real <laughs> throne, right? I'm not that bougie. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We'll find one. We'll do a photo op. But individuals that are onlookers, they seem to forget the journey that you had to take to get there. Uh, it's right? the same, and I also look at where you had said, you know, you see those people that bad luck follows them. I don't see it like that. I look at it like A or B. Either A, they gave up before they got there, or B, they're doing it for the wrong reasons. I like I look at all the money I made, all the losses I took. But when I was doing that, it was for different reasons. It was because I wanted the money. I wanted it's like I the, to me, I really feel to do something as great as I envision, it has to be for the right reason. Right. And then once I started doing for the right reason, everything changed. Like right, they truly right. did, right? Like believe in manifestation, believe in, yes. you know, yep. believing in yourself, all that stuff you hear. I was, you know, I look at my weight loss journey and how much weight I lost. And that taught me the transformation from, you know, being like called heavy your whole life and being over 300 pounds to down to where I got really taught me like, you know, you can do anything you want. You just need to want it that bad. Like, yeah. You know, like I look at this market, like there's so many things even coming to the legit market right from the very beginning to now. That is, I'm telling you, if you believe in good, you also got to believe in evil. And when yeah. I feel like I'm really trying to do something good in this for all of us. And then like for 
our kids and our kids' kids and beyond. And I feel like because of that, there's a lot of big obstacles. But there's a reason why I was kidnapped, almost killed and taken for everything. There's a reason I took the hard lessons and losses. Because when you get in the positions where you are in a position to do something and make a difference, you have to be sound and right about what you're doing, where you're doing it, and what, you know, so like when the money comes in, it's got to go the right places. When right. opportunities come in, they're going to be created the proper way, right? So it's just about getting yourself right on all those angles. Get your purpose, you know. A lot of people, oh, I want to have money and live an easy life. It doesn't work that way. Yeah, it doesn't gotta, work like that. You got to have a purpose, <laughs> Win the lottery. A, re- a, a reason, <laughs> and work for that relentlessly. Yeah. It doesn't just show up. So luck mm-hmm. is a different word for me. To me, I'm like, luck is for those that like hope on the lotto every week. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. That's yeah. luck. To me, you're going to do it. Right. That's all it comes yeah, down you to. You need it. to manifest and, that 100%. That's, that's right. it's, it's, a, it's a rule of life that I live by. Wes knows this. I say this to the team all the time. We want it. You have to manifest it. And it's not just thinking about it. You need to speak that shit out. Yep, it absolutely. needs to be your own brain recognizing you are hearing that and you are saying that. And that is what will come to pass for you. Yep. Um, so I love I think that. We have and, similar, yeah, we, we, you know, I think Tom and I have similar stories with that. Like I, I last year quit an amazing, well, not an amazing, it was a terrible job and I was earning amazing money. And, and, you know, I thought that that's what I needed. And, and, you know, uh, I was in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico on a cruise ship when I decided, you know, I, I you can't go back to work on Monday because just the money is great, but I, I fucking hate it. I can't do that anymore. Yeah. And, you know, getting the opportunity where Tom reached back out to me and we had the opportunity to build something great together. I knew just like you're saying, right. That's you have to, you have to get your mindset right and know that I'm doing this for a different reason now other than money. I know that money is not the thing that's going to, to trump everything else. Right. Absolutely. It's, like, it's, so. I, I agree a hundred percent with that. Like you guys, and it doesn't, the hardness that you took that jump is going to be harder than you oh, could have yeah. just went and showed up. You know, I look at this life is hard. Pick your heart. You know, it's that's hard right. to get up yeah. every day and go to a job that you don't like, you don't enjoy, but you're great, great money. But it's hard to like, look at yourself and be happy because you're not. So it's making those hard decisions, right? Is you have to make the hard decisions. And sometimes that's tough for people. Yeah. There's so many factors to becoming a real success. One thing I had said, and I don't know if people say this, but it's like, everybody's a 1%, but only 1% of us will get there. Right. It's because it just takes a different spark. We all have that same greatness. We all have the same capacity and everything to achieve this. But life is fucking hard. And there's so much thrown as like, you might not have noticed, but I've been a little quiet on social media because I'm battling so much bullshit behind mm. the scenes. And I'm such a nice guy. I don't put any names on blast. I don't put any companies on blast. I'm not going to go that road, right? But I'm battling so much stuff that it's almost hard to put the, the pieces of the puzzle together. Yeah. But you just got to keep going knowing it'll come. And I mean, that's where we all are right now is get through that point. And I mean, again, you'll get to a point where the money's great, you're doing good, but there's going to be other challenges. It doesn't stop. doesn't matter where you are in life, who you are, what your position is, what you don't have and what you do have. We all have hard times, hard situations and stuff to battle with, right? You know, so it's, yeah, no, mindset, it's, guys. it's so true. That's right. And I think that's the, that's the thing that, you know, our audience can relate to as well and they need to hear it. Right. It, it's this, I say this a lot with the team and others. I'm like, it's a checkup from the neck up, right? Yep. You may have read all the best business books and the self-motivation and all these books, but if you are out of it and yep. you're not consistently yep. reminding yourself, Oh yep. shit, that's right. I need to get up. I need to do this. I need to do this. Yep. Then you fall away from it and you're back, right. you're back into that slump. So, yep. um, okay. So let's, Let's talk a bit more about, so you end up in BC. Yeah. You do this. <laughs> that story is fucking phenomenal, by the way, and it may make its way to social. So just be forewarned. Um, wild. Wild. Yeah. Wild. Yeah. We have noticed, right? The, you know, Kevin's not quite as active on social. And I, and I know personally, we've talked and you're like, look, I'm battling with a lot of shit. Um, account gets taken down. You're back up. We're going to make sure that that um, gets built back up to where it needs to be. Number one, uh, we're going to do everything we can in our power because everyone needs to see the awesomeness of Kevin and Royal Harvest. Uh, I mean, thanks. at the end you of know, the day, it's Kevin, but it is Royal Harvest. So you're attached, yeah. but everyone needs to see this. Yeah. Here's, and, and this is another, it's hard. Like I'm into this wholeheartedly to help everybody. And I mean, it sucks because when I first got into this situation, I met a guy again, I won't put any names out there. I had met a guy. We became friends. He ended up, he was a breeder or whatever. Right. So we became mm. friends. He gave me some of his to try and run. I liked what he was doing. So I had said to the guy, you know, hey, are you interested in coming aboard? Oh, yeah, yeah. I said, I, and I said, 
I don't want anything that you have going on. That's not what this is about. This is about us creating, you know, what I'm doing. And that's what I asked for. It's okay, no problem. Everybody's all for it when, when it first gets optioned. So mm -hmm. we were getting ready. We were waiting on Health Canada licensing and I had to get security cleared. And we were like, once all this gets put into place, we'll lock everything in, make it a great partnership and away we go. So here I am driving to my micro, which is almost a four hour one way trip. So almost eight hours driving a day, working nonstop. So in that meantime, I'm still working, you know, other places. So that I would work mm -hmm. the micro one day, other places to pay the bills the other day kind of deal. Right. So while I'm doing this, um, we have to plan. Okay. Cause he already has some of his own genetics. He bred and this, that, and this, I said, we need to get some stuff to start our own. So we order a bunch of strains at uh, LA. He's supposed to catch me for some of those. He just takes them and never pays them for me. So I'm looking like give his half, but we're still at this point working together. So I stopped bugging and I'm like, okay, this is part of the future. I'll leave it like this. So then the next thing I do is I shut down one of my flower light rooms, do a massive pheno hunt for us to look for some females and males we want. Found the most insane male we could have ever asked for. We took it. His like, I shut, I shut down a 10 light thing that he was supposed to split costs on with, but he didn't. That's fine. You know, I'm working on getting Royal going. We find this amazing male. So he takes it. He takes it to go breed it uh, with the females we picked. So he ends up breeding it and gives me absolutely nothing off of those as we were supposed to split that. So, and then the first room we did off the micro, because I they already had genetics registered and he was like, oh, we got to get some of mine in there. And I'm just like, because we're working together, I'm like, okay, that's fine. You know, no problem. And I didn't have a name for the company even at this point yet. It was a numbered company. And I was trying to think of names for the company. And one of the suggestions the guy makes, and I won't say it, is his own name of what he goes by. <laughs> So what? he threw these genetics at me and tried to name the company after itself. And I didn't know this at this point. So we're still just going. And then I think of Royal Harvest. And so that's the way we're going to go. So we do the first room, uh, the first two rooms of a genetic that I got from him. Both of them had that viroid thing. So I had to get they oh, were the no. smallest yields ever. I didn't even sell the first stuff until I ended up cutting my next rooms because I was embarrassed. You know, that oh, they were man. smaller, but when it hit the market, it did really well. People enjoy it. So I'm like, oh, so I'm trying to be calm. I'm such a good guy with a big heart. Do you know what I mean? So next thing you know, um, what was it? I could not hold any of the genetics there because the micro was so small and bad. I had no clone room, bedroom, nothing. Right. So what I needed to do was take cuts from our other places to kind of keep us going. He did it for me twice. And this is after about a few months that I've already ordered us genetics you know, got us one for breeding, <laughs> shut down and did pheno hunting. I even offered him 50% on another thing, like just trying to make this work for us. And I make a call about getting some more cuts because I need him. And his reply to me is, what the fuck have you done for me? Oh, and I'm just like, <laughs> wait a second here. Like, I haven't even made a cent yet. And this is what you're going to say to me, right? I still haven't made a cent, you guys, yeah. just so you know. But yeah. this is what I get in response. So we end up kind of having an out and didn't talk for a bit. So then we, I was into week five in another room with the genetic he gave me. So we ended up, we're talking, we ended up meeting. I said to him, hey, I need to know the lineage on this strain because I've got to get ready for skews. And his reply was, I would never fucking put that in any of my rooms. I only ever ran one plant of it. And I'm like, well, why did you give it me to put in mine? And his reply was, oh, don't worry, it'll work. Just leaf it really good. I go out there the next morning going, what the fuck? Did um what the fuck wouldn't he want this plant for? I start leafing the whole room is a hermy. The whole oh, fucking oh no. room. And that's after he said everything would be vetted, trued, tried, and then tried to backpedal and say, Oh, I said that because the strain looked too much like another one. I am not stupid. Oh we, my we god. All why. So we ended up having a blow off. His last words was like, fuck you, blah, 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 blah. Then after a while it gets going, I get an email hit from him like oh i want this this and this i'm like are you fucking kidding me some of the strains that i have registered at the micro i couldn't even use because they're the ones from la that he just kept you know yeah. what i mean like it was <laughs> so it's it's you know as much as we want to heal this industry and make it better we have to heal our mindsets and yeah, yeah, yeah. i hold nothing against people this yeah. is his own way he thinks whether he was in trouble and needed money or whatever he felt at that point you know, but I think he didn't know who I was, right. the history I had, what I had behind me for not only just genetics, but network, right? So 
I think small thinking and not really knowing kind of just, you know, like I would have loved if it had a work though, because right. it would have been right. a good synergy. I tried and I tried and tried, but you have to learn that you can only help people and give them opportunities. And if they can't, again, have that mindset yeah, and yeah. that thinking and understand that there's a process you run into this. So as much as we want to help everybody, it's hard. Yeah. But we can lead by example while building ourselves like Royal Harvest, like you guys and Legacies and High Flyer. And from there, those good people, that good cream will rise to the top with everybody that enables us all to work as a community and a network for the next generations. Because to us, we're not going to be these in this industry. None of us are going to be crazy, balling out of control and some, you know, we'll do yeah, well. No. We'll yeah. do really well, but sure. we're going to pave a way so the ones behind us are able to do that and put in that hard work, right? Yeah, <clears throat> that makes sense. And that's unfortunate. I think that, you know, for some individuals, I, I know so many individuals like that. Uh, unfortunately, you know, I've had I'm to not, cut ties, right, over, yeah, over and, and, and time. Like, I'm not doing it to blast anything, but it was a major headache. And I live with it in my heart because I'm such a good guy. And I really just tried to fucking help with all I am, try to give someone else who is kind of like-minded, the same opportunity. But that's where getting your mind fucking right on who you are, what you're doing, what's going on, and what life really is. Life ain't a walk in a park. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, exactly. Like, exactly. So it's, it's anybody out there watching this, man, just be the best you. Like, don't, yeah. you know, shit's People trying hurt. to be the shit's other gonna... companies. Yeah, they, and they get, so many get caught up. You know, we talk to a lot of different brands and individuals, some legacy, some not. And, you know, we still define legacy what is legacy and for us it's you know if you've 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 got some sort of seed that was planted pre-legalization there was something there right wes and i were joking earlier on you know we we're talking about you know i surprised them that i had the shirt printed and finally we're going to do some stuff with it um and wes is like i don't know if i could wear it i'm not really i'm like wes you were right at the infancy of legalization helping these brands and these companies with compliance you're still legacy um, but there's two points that came out of that. And that's, those are great stories. And I think a, a lot of individuals can relate to that, whether in the cannabis industry or not. Right. And that's one of the things that we try to do is make sure that our audience is broad enough that they understand the trials and the tribulations of cannabis, like in Canada, especially it ain't easy folks. Like it's tough. You know, Kevin's mentioned having taken a paycheck. We're not much different over here, right? It's we're building, we're Wilson's law, put the knowledge and information out first, success yep. will follow. And we know yep. that for a fact, yep. uh, but there's two things there. One is, um, I'd like to know where did the name Royal Harvest come from? And it doesn't have to have a cool story, but some of them do. And yep. the other one is like your original micro was completely off grid. Was it not? Yeah. Okay. okay. So here we go. So with Royal Harvest, like, again, it was like the process I had got this opportunity and I started saying, what am I going to name this? And I went through everything and everything. And then one day I was sitting in one of my, the, the, the off, not off grid places, but one of the medical places that I'm watering, trying to think, right. And I'm just, to me, I believe you have to have pure faith and belief in something greater than yourself. So a quick story again, that I'm sure people have heard if they've listened to my story a little bit is the hitchhiker story, you know, early twenties, I was still in Nova Scotia dating an amazing woman. She ended up dying in a car accident. Two years later. I'm pulling onto the highway in my car. I barely put friends in that. I've never picked up a hitchhiker and I never did again. And this old guy's hitchhiking. And that voice in my head said, Kevin, you have to pick him up. Pick this guy up. We start driving and talking. Great conversation and car accidents come up. I'm like, yeah, my girl died in a car accident about two years ago. I was like, oh, really? My daughter died in a car accident about two years ago. It ended up being Teresa's dad. So, what? so that's what I, I mean. I've heard that story. That's why I, yeah, I didn't tell you that story. So that's why I tell you. I believe in something greater than myself. I don't care what anybody believes in, what they think. I'm a realist. This is what it is. I believe in something greater than myself. I believe in God, how all that works. I don't care what anybody believes in. Just believe there is something else that works. And so going back to the royal, that's where it came from. On my hand, you can't really see it. I have a tattoo with a crown, with a cross, with a crown on it. And it says King of Kings. And as I'm watering that day, I look at it and I'm like, Royal, so I'm getting emotional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's... that's funny. I almost started crying on you just a sec. And then I'm, mm. I was like, Royal Harvest, and that's where it came from. Sort of. Fuck, that's beautiful, man. Oh, that's all right. I love that. So, something has really been guiding me and getting me through all of that bullshit to be here, right? So I'm even facing huge shit right now. Like, guys, new micros getting into the business. 
if you don't have your license to do everything, know who you're working with. Right. Know, do your research on who's going to help you get out of the gate because, you know, you have to have everything dotted and crossed. So mm. sorry, guys, I got a little emotional. No, there. don't apologize. This, this platform's open, baby. Yeah. It no, was I a, love it that. Was a, it was a realization of how truly I feel something greater than myself um, is guiding me to be where I be. I look at this as king of kings when it comes to God or whatever it is you want to believe in. And that's where it came from. This is not so a Bible bumping, bumping royal harvesting. It's just right, right, right. something, it represents something greater without putting it on a person, an individual. It's just, it is. And I just think Royal was a great name for that. So I love it. And, I love it. Yeah. And, yeah, and the micro, we can circle that. I'll tell you guys, that's, that's a whole different beast right there. <laughs> so, cause I've caught snippets, right? I know it was a big drive, right? Um, Insane. you know, four hours each way, you've got other yeah. stuff going on off grid, yeah. which is not easy. Right. So no. were you running big diesel jennies? Like what were you doing? <laughs> okay. So this is how it was. So my business partner had, um, they had ended up making this little micro, they had a medical and they said, let's do it for real. So they got it, put a little bit of lipstick on it. Like it was, shouldn't have been right. Like it was just right. an awful build, bit of lipstick on it and said, let's try a micro. So, uh, a good friend of mine who's an electrician, first he had introduced me to, a, a another big standard, um, that we're looking for a guy and they wanted to know how much an hour. And I was like, look, I'm not coming for an hour. I'll, this is what I'll, I'll do it for this many points. I don't get paid till I get us there, but we just couldn't reach it. So then um, this opportunity, this micro came up and I didn't bite on it first because he's like, it's fire. It was from where I lived, three and a half to four hour drive one way. That's if it's not crazy snow. And I used to take over 80 kilometers of back logging roads in the middle of BC wild, whether it was winter, you know, no matter what, you know, unplowed, just hoping I get there. But again, I just yeah. said, this is meant to be, keep going. So mm -hmm. besides making that drive, you know, almost eight hours a day. So I'd go to the micro. I would work that anywhere from six to 12 hours a day, drive home. Next morning, I would get up, have to work to other places to pay my bills to keep going. The next day, back to there till I got to the point where things started to make so much jam. I'm like, I'm all into this. I can't, there's no sense of anything else in my life. I have to, what's happening is too important. I see the path. I see where this is supposed to go, right? So not only the drive, that's of the generator. The place is 100% off grid. It's funny, as you're driving there, you get to about kilometer 50 on the road, not even 50, kilometer 30 something, and the telephone pole's top. I remember the first time <laughs> driving out there, I'm like, oh, Man, we're shit. Can't so, yeah. this anymore, Toto. <laughs> yeah, so get out there, and it's running off generators, and it's a, it's a, again, I hate to say it, it was a horrible build, so you've got a whole other balancing act of, you know, we have my, over minus 40 winners out there. I can't tell you generators shutting off, even the winterized diesel, you know, sledging up and not running, man. Rooms like I have been, it's insane and it, it isn't getting any easier, right? Like, <laughs> right. you know, I move into a new place and it's, it's, it's a great place to grow, but it's not the ideal situation. We're working on trying to make everything work the best we can. I look at it like, these poor people that got in this, I won't say poor people, these people that got into CRA trouble, like that mm. sucks. But we all know there's two things in life we're guaranteed. There's the pay taxes and that's die. right. And, you and, got and it. And that's it. So, I mean, these people have got themselves in trouble. And the hard thing is for guys like us that can take advantage of going into certain places like this is making it hard because now CRA has a stronghold on things with them. And if there's any slips on their end, it can potentially kind of ruin what's going on on these new people. And so right. I've got some really met some really nice people in the CRA. That's for sure. Um, I'd be honest. I don't dread their phone calls. I don't mind talking to them there. We're looking at these situations and how it can be. Cause I mean, we're a good opt for some of these places that you get us in there. We make this work, right. You know, we're going to be able to either, you know, figure it out where we buy you out and clear that or a way we keep going. So it's right. This market, they left us in this last five, six years, they left us with a whole lot of mess for us to clean up. But I mean, we're all doing a great job. I'm proud of everybody that's getting up every day, going to their grows, going to their facilities, whatever they're doing. You guys who's putting in work, helping us getting out, spreading the word. You know, it's, uh, you know, hats off to everybody. It's just pay your taxes as much as it sucks. And we wish we could have it all. Pay your taxes. It's used 
to pay for our roads, do this. Yes, they may build homes and stuff. Whatever they do with it, I don't fucking know. I don't watch government much. I'm following my heart. But it's just, it's one of those things that's making it tough for all of us at every avenue, right? Well, there's definitely room for reform and we know that and and it will come. Um, yeah. But you, you brought up some good points where, you know, we touched on this last week where, um, you know, there was some banter back and forth on LinkedIn and individuals talking about the excise tax. And then there was others, you know, counter arguments. At the end of the day, it was, you know, we basically deduced that reducing excise tax is not going to save this industry. There's still a lot of companies that even with less taxation, they're not doing things right. They're either inferior product or their marketing is not where it needs to be. Distribution challenges, getting in bed in the early days with the wrong, you know, um, it could be copax, It could be, you know, pre-roll. It could, yeah. There's a multitude of issues, right? Yeah. yeah and, 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 you know. Any of those people who got in those bad situations, because like I said, I trust me, I know about I know about this and I know about having to work through these things. Right. You can get through it. But it's 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 um, oh, I forget where I was going with that. I forget where I was going with that. Honestly. That's all right. Stoner brain. Oh. <laughs> well, we're, we're going through a lot of information, though, too. So um, <laughs> that's all right. So we can come back to that if we remember. But. So now you're not in, are, are you still in the original off-grid micro or is that abandoned? You're done with that. It's gone. Well, it's, it's not that it's abandoned. Our license is still there. I have genetics just sitting there and that's it, right? Just kind of, it's keep the license active. We have to have the name live and everything right. else. So yeah. we have to keep that rolling as that. But again, it's all about, like, again, we're, we're moving forward. So it, it's just getting none of this industry is easy right now, right? So it's just trying to navigate through these waters again, right? Jump from one crazy ship into another one. And now yeah, it's the yeah. battle of, you know, trying to clean up the mess that everybody has left in our way. And I do remember what I was saying before, those people that got in bad situations and stuff, they can get out of it at any, if they work through it. But again, it comes down to the, th the only thing you can't fix is an inferior product, bad right. product, you know, not putting your, it out there enough. You know, you have to take control of your fate. You know, if you're growing the right stuff, there's always going to be a lane for you. They're always going to be able to sell, but you just got to, it doesn't just happen. You got to put yourself out there. You got to go get it. And um, I know I feel right. that's where I kind of feel blessed. You know, I do have a, I'm pretty good at what I do when it comes to growing weed. And I just, you know, I'm following my heart, putting myself out there. And I just feel like a lot of people have a hard time connecting those two. So yeah. I'm hoping that I'm able to be a voice a little bit more. For those that aren't able, because I'm not just trying to get Royal Harvest up and rocking. I want to see everybody else do the same, right? I want to see, you know, all my other buddies like, you know, Jeff and everybody else. I want to see their micros raise up and do well. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure. And excise won't, you know, reducing that shit will cure the industry, but it'll right. help the real ones grow it'll it alleviate. like it should yeah, be. That's it'll right. help yeah. us create this industry because if they make a little bit less... They're going to make a lot more. So you guys can take that. Tell the government, if you take a bit less, we can create a lot more. The more that we can create is the more that we'll make. Again, short-term gains is never going to gain what you need for the future. It's keep your eyes on what we're going to do for our kids and our kids beyond that. And from that is how we're really going to grow this. Because, I mean, again, we're in situations where people are just trying to feed frenzy because they're all dying on anything right. they can. Yeah. So yeah. you've got to navigate through that, find your own way, be solid on it. And I mean, you should be able to rock and roll if you're putting out a half decent product. Right? Yeah. Well, I, I think that when it comes to the the excise tax, you know, and I, I certainly don't want to belabor that point because we've talked about it before, but I, so following from MMAR to ACMPR and the Cannabis Act, I mean, I went through it all, right? And when I jumped into the compliance sector, working with Ample Organics and John Prentice, shout out John, um, the government of Canada, the CRA, Health Canada, were very clear in the early days that the amount of money they were going to need to spend to develop the regulations and the framework and then educate the public. Because let's not forget, <laughs> there is still a large popula or, or portion of the population that is against cannabis le uh, legalization. They're still against it to this day. So when it came to the educational programs, what you see through OCS and Health Canada, they had a very aggressive plan to recoup those costs right. very early. So right. to be surprised of high taxation or anything, you shouldn't, you shouldn't expect any different, right? No, I, I get that. At the same time, it sucks, right? It does. Well, they, <laughs> and, were, and they were basing that off of $10 a gram too, right? right. So, and not even, we're not know, getting anywhere they, near that. 
That's right. And they keep it the same. Like, come yeah, that's, on, right? no, that's, 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 that's the, the part problem. they can't get on board with. Yeah. And the that's hard wrong. part about the government is once they get something, are they really ever going to give it Income back? Income tax. No different. Yeah. What was that to pay Wait. for? World War One or two? And it's still yeah, they said, every but this week. Will be a little tax to yeah, pay yeah, for the just, war. Just a little prick. We, we promise yeah. it won't hurt, right? Yeah. <laughs> just a little pinprick. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about your products for a minute because, you know, I'm still trying to track down. So I've tried Gelati. Fucking awesome. I don't know if yep. you um, are still producing that. It's still going to market. Distribution is is challenging in some cases when you've got smaller supply um, yep. or you're working under a micro. Um, frosted fruit cake. Tell us about that for a second. Like one, it's being produced still. It's it's one multiple. Any review I've ever seen, it's like the best of the best. Um, yeah, I'm very, what's the deal I'm, with that? Well, I'm very blessed with that. It's just uh, my buddy Jim at Sacred Cuts has had bred that. Um, mm-hmm. It's uh, absolutely amazing strain. Um, I knew when the first time I ran it, I was like, okay, I just did something special because. I'm a very picky smoker myself, right? Like I'm one of those guys, I get a few puffs in, I don't enjoy it. I'm not smoking it. To me, I'm putting like this in my whiskey, body. I got to right? like yeah. it. And I knew I was on to something special. Um, so I started ramping up. Oh, I had that on the go like fucking years before this too anyways, right? But I, not years, but a little bit before the legit. And then, so I knew I was going to keep that around. Once I started seeing the reactions, like I went down to book club with it and I have some really great friends down there who try everything. And they're like, you know, we've, We've probably tried every variation of frosted fruitcake there is, and this right. is just different, right? So I take pride in what I do. I'm a connoisseur, and I love to smoke the best of the best. And mm-hmm. to me, I feel like, you know, Sacred Cuts knocked it out on that breed. It's just the flavor, the smell, the smoke is one. There's always, that's why I love that I've been pheno hunting so much lately. I've been, I'm getting ready to, like, I'm rotating out everything that was, there almost it's like mm-hmm. frosted fruitcake will be there for sure yeah. but everything else i've got some madness 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 being lined up for like you I'm, guys I, right I, now. I keep saying this all the time i'm in the wrong province because i mean if i was if i was anywhere near you you'd be probably be hanging all day like yeah <laughs> put me to work you know dirty jobs i've done it i've sat on a five gallon bucket for a weekend trimming 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 right upside down your ass is sore your hands are sore but it's it, you've got it. That's how you earn your stripes. You got to earn your stripes really somehow, cool. right? Yeah, um, absolutely. So definitely looking forward. I'm glad that you're keeping that on because hopefully I'll get to try that one. Um, but you're very selective. It, I love the name. I've never heard of Sacred Cuts. Never heard yeah. of this. There yeah. are they a nursery? What what are they? Well, no, it, it was a uh, off the you know he was a, a legacy off you know gray market. Uh, I think just breeder um, who was you know ACMPR and put some uh, great stuff together and away we go, right? Just absolutely beautiful Got stuff it. he's putting out. He's like, Very you can cool. check him out on Instagram. I don't know the yeah. exact tag offhand, but and That's he's, fine. Got we'll so find many, it. he's got so many variations of that. And he has sent me some originals that I've had, was able and blessed enough to put into with my bank when I logged the seed banks I needed to put in uh, with, you know, the Health Canada and stuff. So I was able to get more of his in line there, which makes it amazing. So I've got some cool stuff in the works right now. I'll just say there's a, there's a bed right now, a few beds right now, with, and I don't do beds, but there's like 21 different kinds being looked at on top of a 36 that have already been vetted and they're absolutely insane. It's just picking the right places to bring yeah. them in, et cetera, right? And then there's, I can't even lie, probably, man, I've got to have well over a thousand or more different oh, unique exotic genetics folks. to bring, right? Yeah, like, that's so a lot to sort through, through, right? When you yeah, talk pheno through. hunting, like, a lot of individuals, you know, your home growers, um, which is kind of where I started it, even in that process, that scale is tough. Like it's, you know, to get it to where, you know, what's going to work and you could have the most pumped up, hyped up. It could be uh, whoever, I, I don't even, you know, I'll just say like a Barney's farm or something. You know, I remember when they brought out their pineapple express and everyone was hyped about it and I get it and it's probably me, but I'm like, yeah, I don't know. I, it's okay, right? I had the most success with Chem Dog, right? All yeah. Chem Dog and Master Kush. Actually, Jeff and I talked about that. But there is the the origin. There is the breeder, right? So in this case, when you've got Sacred Cuts, but there's also it's the finesse that yeah. and the love that you put into it and yeah. coaxing out coaxing. the best of it. And when you phenol right. hunt, you may have three out of a lot. They all yeah. look significantly different, but yeah. it takes that 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 true artisan. To be able to go, that's the one. That's yeah, the yeah, one I'm going to keep. 
it's even when, you know, even when I'm doing pheno hunts, I also look for males and everything. So you're looking for the traits, certain traits on everything. You're really trying to isolate down to that one. I always use it. People say, well, some people would ask me about pheno hunting. I said, it's like sisters. You know, you're going to have two sisters and there's one that's going to be smoking hot. Yeah. And then there's one that's just not quite as smoking hot. So you want to always try to find <laughs> that smoking hot seed. You know what I mean? Right. And not right. that that's what's important, but in, in pheno hunting, it's an easy totally, analogy it. for yeah. someone to wrap yeah, their yeah. mind around, right? And yep. so you're always want to find the one that, you know, best aroma, going to give you a great yield. It's very, you know, it's very, you don't get much, you know, problems and it's, it's pet, you know, keeps pests away. So you're looking for a lot of different variables when you're feeding on thing. And then once you find that one, then you got to rerun it on a little mm. bigger step to make right. sure that it's going to duplicate it. Then you mm -hmm. want to rerun it one more time, a little bigger, make sure you're not, because once you commit to a big room, if oh you yeah! Don't now, have can, that can it vetted, handle the C? Yeah, can it handle again, all the CO two like and the newts and yeah? It's like this. It's like I go back to that one room where Buddy looked at me and said, "I would never fucking run that," and I found out the whole thing week five, middle of nowhere, running on a generator. I veg for I veg my plant long because I was doing the money that that cost me when I had to chop oh, that room down at week five man. was insane. So that's oh. why you need to make sure you know what you have. You need to be honest too. If you're giving people stuff, make sure you're straight up. Like this is check. Don't say it just to take an opportunity. Make sure, right? Just be the best you at every yeah, angle, yeah. right? Yeah, uh, that's good. So that, that leads me to a good question then and and a segue into, so we were talking earlier about, do you know the the folks over at Cush Mountain, Cush Mountain Crowd? Uh, you know, I, 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 yeah, I, I've met them. The great people. Like every time we see each other, it's nothing but love. I love those guys. They put on a prime time product. So, I mean, great individuals over we, there. Yeah, we haven't had group. a chance to try it ourselves. They're, they're going to be doing a big Ontario push, which Royal is as well. And we're very much looking forward to that. Um, but they, they had a post and it was talking about craft and what defines craft anymore, right? Because it used to be, at least in our heads, we would look at craft is similar or the likeness of what beer, craft beer, a smaller production, right? So we would normally relate craft to micros. Um, but to Justin's point, if Justin did write the article, I always say it's Justin, but just, it could be, um, sorry, Justine or Tyson. Um, is it like, what, what, how would Kevin define craft cannabis now? To me, craft cannabis is the heart and soul that's put into it. It doesn't matter what scale or what volume. It's the heart and soul. I can walk in, you know, to a big facility and like even look at, come out and meet my workers. My passion goes to them. You know, it's what you're putting in. I can grow the same quality at any level, at any big as you want to be. If you walk in, we follow my program, we run it how I do it. I can promise you, you're going to be cutting some absolutely beautiful stuff nonstop and very consistent, consistent, consistent. So, to me, craft is heart and soul. How big is your heart? I've got a huge heart. You can tell I feel like I want to take cannabis to a level that we can help heal this world. So to me, my craft cannabis is big. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, and yeah. I'm going to show, I'm going to show that you can do this, right? Like where people, oh, corporate against laws. Like I would never go to the massive warehouse full, but anything like 100 lights, a room, I'll say is easy, you know? Right. It, it's one master grower putting his heart and soul in there and then having a great crews that come behind him and you know what I mean? Help connect, uh, dot the I's and cross the T's. Yep. I'm telling you, it is cut, clean, fill, flip. We can do the exact same thing we did a legacy at the same caliber, same mm -hmm. everything else. When you would dial in your environment, you dial in your program, you dial in your feed and your system and you lead with a good heart, never give up and put that work in. Can't skip beats because one of those things I like to teach people is one day to us is a year to a cannabis plant. So when you put that off one day, that is a whole year of production. So the only person you can blame for lack of results when, oh, I'll hook up the CO2 tomorrow because it won't yeah, hurt yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. It did hurt you for that, you know? Right. So yeah. to me, craft cannabis is heart and soul. And, I love and bottom it. line, it, it doesn't matter what size because, you know, I get it. I was small, but I was, I've always had bigger places too, yeah, right? Yeah. That, and, yeah. and we were putting out the same quality, you know? So it's it just comes down to, how big is your heart? Right. You know, and, and, and go for it. Right. Like, so. Yeah. yeah. I really like that. I think that's one of the things that Wes and I had, had said was the scale or the size of it doesn't necessarily matter. It's, are you showing up? Right. Are you in that grow room every day? Are you touring, you know, in a lot of the bigger facilities, they'll have the green mile with all the grow rooms, the flower rooms. Are you in every grow room? Are you putting your heart and soul into it? Um, I love that. We're going to make sure that we share that. 
what's uh what's before we wrap i want to know what's next steps for kevin what's next steps for royal harvest next step is to get everything rolling and flowing smoothly like i said i'm hitting i almost called you guys and was like man i gotta put this off because i've got a mm. stack of stress that i almost felt like i didn't eat, i couldn't come out and put me because I don't show everybody that again, like you noticed, I was a little quiet on media because mm. I'm, I'm dealing with a lot of stuff, but I deal with it well, but I just, I have to conquer what's going on and then we just keep going. Right. So yeah. what's next is to get all the business side rolling, right? Everything smooth on that end, everything rotating, you know, bringing in even more genetics, you know, bringing more excitement to the industry. Like I'm getting it ready to do a drop. I won't say which one yet. But even on what's coming up next, I'm going to do just a straight pre-roll. I'm not even going to let people see this flower yet. I'm going okay. to tease them with the pre-roll. Then on the next room, I'm going to hit them with some pre-roll and the flower. Then after that, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to hit all the guys on direct, tease them with a new strain in joints. Then we're going to come up with flower. Just play with it and have some yeah, fun. Yeah. And then just start trying to elevate not just my company, but this industry. And then find ways. My end goal, guys, as you know, is to help make a difference in this world. You know, one of my goals is as I start making good money is put greenhouses in low income communities and where it's needed. So families and kids, their kids can go out, donate their time. They all help mm. with the gardening. And when it's harvest time, that whole community shares the food. Love that. Our world got way fucking bigger problems. Open our eyes. Do you know what I mean? Oh like, yeah. Yeah. We've got too many people on the street. We've got even me, you guys, I kid you not. I still am maxed on everything. I'm, you know, without getting into it, there's times that I have one meal a day. Why? Because well, that's all I can do right now. And I'm right. not kidding you. And I can blame it on the people that mismanage things at the beginning. I can blame it on this, but you know what? It is what it is. I am where I am. The only way I get to that better spot is keep moving. And that, mm -hmm. I guess, you know, is my mission, is my purpose to create better ways, to teach people a better mindset, to help motivate people to know that, you know what, it is rough, but I will get through it. And I'm glad, even me, it's like, this is like my own little pet talk right now that I had to have with myself because uh, I'm going through it right now, but I know that shit's going to be great. You know what I mean? So yep. that's just, you know, end of the line for, you know, what is my future goal is to keep growing the company. I mm -hmm. do want to stretch it as far as I can make this happen, but it's because I want to make a difference right around yeah. the world with this right so that's where my mindset is right yeah yeah that's beautiful man so go ahead so i'm wondering um i'm wondering if we want to maybe make a difference in one of the listeners minds and wondering what everyone's thoughts are on maybe you know we do do the the swag for for royal harvest over at the high flyer and i'm wondering if we want to give away maybe a t-shirt to a lucky listener if, it's getting uh, to be a bit warmer let's get let's do that it is a, let's yeah, uh, yeah, let's give away a royal harvest t-shirt i think oh, um, I love it. everyone loves royal harvest everyone that we know of and and we see the traffic to your brand collection which is great so we'll do that we'll break this clip out um we'll let the you know the the winner choose color size all that sort of thing but absolutely um, get in there re-like because you had a massive following make sure know, you're following right? royal harvest we'll make sure that that's available to you follow us we'd love you to follow us um but more importantly let's get kevin the love that he deserves in this industry again get his socials back to where they need to be um but yeah let's do uh let's do a giveaway we'll give away a royal harvest t-shirt oh thanks guys and i hope one of those i can't wait for one of those lucky listeners to uh to get that that's awesome it's that's yeah, lovely to me yeah. right honestly from 12 year old 13 year old kev saying to his mother this is what i want to do for the rest of my life how you know i want to make a difference through this and now like someone's going to get a giveaway of one of my t-shirts yeah. it's like it fucking so awesome humbling. it's, it's so such cool, a blessing, man. Right? i love it listen kevin you're you're so fucking awesome man i i love i mean it's sometimes i just pick up the phone or i'll text you hey what are you doing and, and we just chat um you're certainly not on legacies because of our relationship i mean you kind of are but the world needs to hear your story. The world, the world needs to hear the challenges of the industry. Um, yeah. But more importantly, they need to hear the story behind the legacy. And you've certainly built one, but you're building one much bigger. And also, by the way, love the way you say car. Car. Oh, yeah. That's car. my East Coast. They used to the make East, fun of me in the trim rooms. They used to call me the pirate and the, the, the pirate in the trim rooms because <laughs> they're, they're always like car and far, right? Car. Like, car. Yeah, I need you to get that over to the little bar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Kevin, you're a great sport, man. Love you to death. You're an absolutely yeah. incredible individual. We thank you so much for being on Legacies. Yeah. And listen, it's likewise to you too. You know, I love you guys both. You guys both from the very beginning have become friends supportive and i mean i can't thank you enough not just from me but for everybody in this industry because you guys are really helping a lot of people be seen and heard where we don't not allowed to have our own voices yet 
I mean, I know I pushed the boundaries a little bit, um, but we have to, you know, we got to take that risk, you know? So, you know, yeah. I mean, half the reason I lost my Instagram, but it is what it is, you know? We learn. We live yeah. and learn, right? Like yeah, every yeah. lesson in life, we live and learn. Yeah. Yeah. And I looked at it, it just allowed me to repurpose, you know, start a new one and away we go. So yeah, hopefully guys like and follow, get in and get your Royal Harvest t-shirt and let's, uh, let's get that up. Because the more oh, we can well, pass the message, the motivation and everything else that's coming is the greater we're all going to grow as an industry, as a community and as a world. Right. So let's, let's start working on that stuff. Right. For sure. For sure. Yes, Thank you, Kevin. Great. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Wow. Kevin Varner. <laughs> Kevin Varner. Uh, did I fucking yeah. tell you or what? Right. We we've known, but what a beacon of light in this industry he is. It's, it's extremely, it's extremely inspiring and motivating to, to know all that shit he went through. And, and again, all the cannabis stuff out of it, just personal life stuff. Just and, life and stuff. Yeah. Challenges. And just cause you know, you and I have been through stuff recently and all that stuff and, and all that stuff he's gone through would make any normal person go, you know, that's it. I'm I done. Need to do something I'm give up. Right. And he, yeah. and he, and he's basically like that. No, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm still going. Yeah. Right. And just so inspiring. It's so uh, good. Unreal. Um, yeah. Super excited to see what, uh, what he's going to do, be doing next. Um, but anyways, we'll get uh, we'll get this episode out. Everyone's going to enjoy this one. It's a it's a good one. It's going to be a great one for sure. Yeah. Um, yep. So quick reminder: we've got Can Expo this weekend. Uh, we'll be there on the Saturday. Unfortunately, as all time would permit for us. Um, if you haven't got your tickets yet, make sure you get those. Uh, great consumer expo. Um, brands will be there. It'll be a little B two B too, but there's going to be bud tender sampling and a whole bunch of stuff going on. Um, and Wes, what else have we got? We also, just a quick reminder on the giveaway for Royal Harvest. So uh, in honor of Kevin and, and his awesome brand and backstory and obviously his legacy, we're going to give away to one lucky listener a uh, Royal Harvest uh, t-shirt. So um, down here we'll have uh, how to enter and who you need to be following and stuff like that. But basically follow us, follow Royal Harvest and uh, comment or tag uh, a friend in the in the comments there on the post and we'll uh, get you entered for a chance to win a Royal Harvest t-shirt. Let's so, do it. Let's get um, his account back yeah. to where it was. I think he's at almost 4,000 when it got taken down or something like that. Yeah, it was disappointing when he got taken down because yeah. he's got quite that a one, bit. That but, one hurt. Uh, it hurt a lot. That's a hurt. That's a snake. Yeah, that's a it snake. Did. But uh, hopefully, it, hopefully, this giveaway will help him get a couple extra followers. And obviously, you know, outside of the giveaway, if you need anything, we we do offer uh, a bunch of brand swag on the highflyer.ca. So make sure you're uh, you're checking us out there, right here. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, yeah. So right on. It's a good episode this week. Good All episode. right. Well, until next week. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Appreciate you. <laughs>